Okay guys, yeah, here we are. Um, I've just finished a, uh, a bit of a run, which is not something that I'm known for. And uh, I just wanted to talk you through why I did it, how I do it, uh, and what's my thinking. Uh, I can't run, I'm 41 years of age. I weigh, I don't know what I weigh at the moment, maybe 18 stone, which is what about oh, 234, 250 odd, something like that. My brain isn't functioning properly because I've just done my sprints. Um, so bear with me. Now, what um, what I do, because I'm not training for anything that's specifically for sport, if I was training for specific sport, I'd measure out my intervals according to the uh, energy system that I'll be working um, when I did my sport. You know, it's pretty obvious the sort of things that you do. If you're an MMA fighter, you, uh, you ultimately want to mimic your rounds, um, things like that. But I'm doing it for health, for fitness, for body composition. Um, so I want to, you know, I want to get the best of all worlds. I read a study today that uh, talked about how doing extended sprint training, which I think essentially meant uh, grouping a series of intervals together. I think they did something like, let's say they did four 30 second, 40 second intervals. They measured that against basically one extended set for the same amount of work. Um, and what they did, I'll turn around and you can see sort of where I've run from. Oh no. Right. Don't worry what you can see. Uh, and pardon the waffling. So, the extended sprint training actually improved fat, fat oxidation the next day, better than the intervals, but the intervals improved insulin sensitivity quite considerably. So insulin sensitivity statistically is you know, your body's ability to deal with carbs. Most people who have a problem with body fat tend to have a problem with, with insulin sensitivity. So what do you do? Well, you know, because I want to I want to do what's fun, what I did and what, what I like to do. I put 10 minutes on this phone here, uh, on the timer. When I start to run, I flick it on. And when I stop running and jog, uh, or sorry, walk, I flick it off. Uh, I listen to music that lifts me up at certain points. So I might start off the first, the first bit of the 10 minutes, or, or almost really with a jog. And then, and then as time goes on, it gets to be a sprint harder and harder and harder. Now, there's a lot of research about uh, the benefits of running on sand that they're pretty obvious. You don't get the impact. So for me, uh, with what was a broken ankle and a lot of torn tendons and ligaments about six or seven years ago, I have to be very careful. And for the first time in, well, it feels like 20 odd years, I can actually go for it when I run on sand. Now, not obviously, most of you are not as lucky as me to be living here, you know, in, do this way, in, in beautiful Marbella. Um, but if you get the opportunity, try. Just one word of warning if you're going to do beach running. Uh, build up to it first because you're, you're lifting the leg higher to drive out of the sand, obviously. And if you're not careful, you know, most of us, we have weak psoases. Um, your psoas will, will basically, you'll put too much tension on the psoas and uh, you run the danger of it getting locked up 24 hours, 48 hours later. And if you've ever had a locked up psoas, um, you know, you're in a world of, uh, you can be in a world of pain, so you don't want that. So that's my take on interval training. Uh, very briefly to summarize, go out, have fun, go hard, go slowly. And for all those of you who seem to be, you know, who feel confused, should I do 40 seconds on, six times the length off, blah, 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 you know, yes and no. Really, honestly, the most important thing for most of us uh, in the game of body composition is just to go out there and do it. So go out there and do it. And this is Nick Mitchell and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.